Am I missing anyone? I don't believe so, sir. All right, cool. Um, and so we hope to have some good dialogue. Um, and at the end, we're going to take questions and comments uh, from residents. Hopes that we've covered a lot of that ground. If we if we didn't cover that directly, affects you that we can't cover. Tonight, please feel free to reach out to my office. Our number is 202 724 8045. Again, that's 202 724 8045. I love my season citizen. Uh, the energy you all bring uh, over the course of the trying time, but you all give me energy without and make it all worth it. So I'm glad to have you on the call as you all continue to come in to the room, some via Zoom uh, and some via the telephone. Uh, so I'm not going to belabor any longer. Uh, so I turn it over to Don T. McPhil to talk about the 50 plus program. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. And good evening. Um, first, I just like to thank Council Member White um, on behalf of our director, uh, Dr. Unique Morris Hughes from the Department of Employment Services. Thank you for this awesome opportunity, as well as your staff for this invitation this evening. Um, as you said, my name is Dante McPhil. I coordinate the Security Community Service Employment Program, the DC Department of Employment Services. CSEP stands for Senior Community Service Employment Program. It is actually the Department of Labor's oldest workforce development program in the it's been around since the 70s. It came out of um, older worker legislation. And there is the CSEP in every state in the United States, um, in every county. Um, in the district, there are two. And at DOES, we are the state grantee, but there's also a national grantee for at NCBA, the National Caucus for Black Aged as well. Um, the purpose of CSEP is really to provide work-based experiences to seniors um, 55 and older who would like to get back to work and may be, may be experiencing extended unemployment, might need to um, some type of supportive employment in order to reacclimate to today's technology and different work environment requirements. So CSEP is an awesome program here at DOES where seniors who are 55 and older of course, D.C. residents that want to get back to work, we provide 20-hour-a-week subsidized work experiences in the district's public organizations as well as nonprofits. And the purpose is really to get our seniors retrained and get them confident back into work, back into these routines of, you know, some of them have been out of work for well over five, ten years. So just getting into the routine, getting their confidence built up, learning today's technologies, while also being supported in, in applying for permanent um, employment. It's just a great program. We also pay them the district's minimum wage. So every time the minimum wage increases in the districts, our, our um, customers' um, rate wages also increase. So right now they're all compensated $16.10 an hour for 20 hours a week. They're primarily based in many of the district's AAAs, our area agencies on aging. Um, so throughout the district, we have seniors supporting nutritional programs. And honestly, if you ask them, they are the wind beneath the, the wings of these nutritional programs. And we have seniors from the ages of 55 right now, all the way to 88 years old. And I'd like to report in January, we actually uh, found employment, a permanent employment, which of course is the goal of the program, subsidized, um, unsubsidized employment. Um, we actually found employment for an 84 year old here in the district. So um, it's an awesome program, great opportunities. And again, thank you for allowing me to be here today to share more about it. Thank you, Ms. McField. I'm pretty sure we're going to have some questions to, about that. We appreciate what you all doing to get our seniors back into the work, workforce and active in their community and service. Um, next, we'll move to the home care program. Uh, Dr. Pelinteri, if you can talk about a little bit about what you all do with DACD. That. Absolutely. Um, so good evening, everyone. Um, I am uh, here from the Department of Housing and Community Development, um, and I think 
most of you know that we're one of a couple different housing agencies and some other agencies that do some housing work that I'll sort of uh, get into today. And um, I'm sure we'll get into in the comments as well. But the Department of Housing and Community Development, it's not the housing authority. Uh, we do a number of things um, related to building affordable housing and financing it. Uh, we do a lot of work around rent control and condos and condominium conversions. Um, and one thing that we also do <clears throat> is we uh, help uh, low-income individuals, low-income homeowners fix their homes. Um, and this program has been around, been around since 1982. And I think many of you are probably somewhat familiar with it. It's changed a little bit over uh, the years. And so that's what I'll talk about tonight is for what the program looks like today. Um, so the program today is a grant program. That means it's not a loan. You don't have to get another loan to get the program. Some of you may be familiar in earlier iterations of the program. You know, you had to, it was a loan program and you had to go to a bank first, et cetera. That is no longer the case. It is a grant program. You uh, come to the program through a community-based organization and that community-based organization will help you assemble your application for the program. What the program does is it replaces roofs and it helps with accessibility. What does that mean? Accessibility means your ability to get into your home, your ability to get into your kitchen, your ability to get upstairs, your ability to get into the bathroom. Um, over the years, the program has done a number of things, but currently that is what the program does. Um, we certainly will, if your roof is damaged walls, we will repair them and paint them. If you're you know, in terms of doing accessibility in your kitchen, we will you know, provide uh, various uh, things in your kitchen or bathroom to make sure you can get in. And that may include uh, things like a new bath a tub, or a new sink and, and these sorts of things. But what we do, again, is provide grants for roofs and accessibility. Um, what we do also do is we help coordinate to some extent with our fellow um, agencies. So currently the Department of Energy and the Environment is also helping people with roofs, but they're also doing uh, work in terms of people's uh, furnaces and AC uh, and things like that. So together with a couple different agencies, we may be able to put together a, a complete uh, sort of more complete uh, set of work. Um, what's the eligibility for our program? You have to own and live in a home as a primary residence for at least three years. And I'm pretty sure for most folks on the phone, they've been district residents for a long time. So that's not gonna be a, a problem. But if you own your home and you've been in your primary residence for at least three years, you may be eligible. You do have to be current on all DC and federal taxes. And that's where a, a community-based organization and others can be helpful and help you figuring out what, if you are uh, delinquent, what you can do to, 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 to get um, that taken care of. You have to be current on your mortgage for the last 12 months. Again, that's something the CBOs can work with you on, um, but we do uh, require that. You do have to have current homeowners insurance. So again, that's something that, that's why we have you go to the community-based organization because they can help you if that's something you don't have. It's really important you have homeowners insurance. And you have to meet the income requirements. Um, and the income requirements are what's called 80% of uh, median family income. So you can think of it roughly as, as less than $80,000 a year in income. Uh, we have a schedule on our, our webpage that you can go to. And again, the community-based organization can help you figure out if you qualify. But it is a standard that we find many people, even people who think they don't qualify, are able to qualify uh, for uh, assistance. Um, so that's the single family residential rehab program. Um, what I want to stress here, given some of what I just said, is that the um, Department of Housing and Community Development does a number of other programs for uh, helping people with home ownership, both getting into home ownership through the uh, HPAP or Home Purchase Assistance Program. And currently we have $50 million of federal money that we're using to help people get caught up on their mortgages, their taxes, their insurance, 
all the things I just talked to that might be a barrier for you to be able to get into the single family rehab program are things that can be helped through the homeowner assistance fund. So I do encourage you uh, to contact uh, our office uh, at uh, 202-442-7200. Um, I'm sure the council member's office will, will be able to put the uh, website and the phone number uh, where you can find them. Uh, but, but please come talk to us, talk to our community-based organizations, and uh, let's see if we can get you um, the help you need to get your, your roof fixed and allow you to be able to move around your home uh, in, in a safe uh, way. So that, that's it from DHCD. Thank you. Uh Dr. Penitentiary, let me ask you this. Uh, what, when you say community-based organizations, because some seniors may be intimidated about filling out these long applications. We know a number of our seniors are becoming more technological sa technologically savvy, but, but some are not. Um, and I know one of the barriers they faced was when they start asking about taxes. Um, what organizations are you all working with in the community that they can reach out to to get assistance? Um, let me uh, pull that up while we're talking. Um, I should have had it up when we were talking. Right. Um, I'm going to go back to uh, Ms. McField. Can you leave your contact information real quick if you haven't, um, or how people can call DOS to get a uh, uh, resource for jobs? Absolutely. Um, and I thought we would have it because there's definitely more information about CSEP in terms of eligibility criteria. So when individuals ask questions, I'll also... Um, outline those things. But for information about the program, you can call 202-899-3734. And that's the direct number to CSEP. For individuals, again, you should be 55 and older, a DC resident. We also are bound by the Department of Health and Human Services federal poverty guidelines. So one person, um, I believe, cannot make more than $16,900. And, you know, and of course, um, exhibit a desire to secure a permanent appointment as well. Okay, thank you. Um, how, and quick question, how does it affect those who are on fixed income, Social Security that can't go over, can't, can't get a certain amount of hours? Yes, awesome, awesome question. Now, um, with Social Security, well, let me talk about the benefit. The benefit with CSEP is that all federal determinations, um, CSEP funds are exempt from federal determination. So they are not allowed to count CSEP income for housing or food stamp determinations. That's why the seniors love it. Okay. Now, there is an issue when it comes to Social Security where, from what I've been told, they're not allowed to make more than $841 a month unless they're at full retirement especially SSI, there's been some issues with it impacting their income. But in terms of food stamp and housing, there's a letter that we provide them, a federal exemption letter. We cite the legislation and that money is exempt from those considerations. Mm. All right, I'll jump back over <clears throat> to you, Doc, go ahead. Yeah, um, I, um, just for your, your uh, information, I posted it here in the chat, I think you can see, but these are organizations like Housing Counseling Services, uh, Lydia's House in Ward 8, University Legal Services in Ward 8, um, Latino Economic Development uh, Council, um, and MANA, Inc., I think, and Marshall Heights Community Development Corp. So there's a real range of organizations that can help. You can always call our office. Also, you know, we will work with clients. So if we need to come pick something up or you like to do it old school and drop by the office and, and come to our housing counseling, um, housing resource center, which is right at 1800 MLK. Um, you, can, you can let us know you're coming and we'll meet you there and, and pick up your information that way. You know, I know we've talked to a number of seniors who are concerned about data theft and, and concerns about their, their, their information and things like that. So we will work with you community-based organizations will, but also uh, the Department of Housing Community Development will work with you uh, to do it. Um, so we, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Thank you. I appreciate that. And those who are listening, please note you can also join us through my Facebook Live if you want to see us and be involved in the room uh, on my Facebook Live. That's T-R-A-Y-O-N, white. We also stream it live on Facebook. All right. Oh, so now we'll jump down to Miss Melissa Bird uh, for the Department of Health 
care finances. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. My name is Melissa Bird. I am the Medicaid Director for the District's Medicaid Programs. I'm going to talk just a little bit about um, mostly what we offer through the Medicaid program and a little bit of how some of what we offer also connects to Medicare. Um, so just so everyone knows, um, the Department of Healthcare Finance is a um, cabinet agency responsible, level agency responsible for Medicaid and the Alliance um, Healthcare Program and the Immigrant Children's Program. Um, Medicaid and Medicare are different programs, but residents um, can be in both programs at the same time. Um, for Medicaid, we provide health coverage, um, usually with a target towards individuals who are low income, kids, pregnant women, and of course, um, seasoned citizens as the council member um, uses and people with disabilities. Um, we, DC government, through the Department of Healthcare Finance, actually runs the Medicaid program for the district. Medicare provides health coverage to um, Americans um, who are 65 years of age or older and folks with a long-term disability. It's the federal government that administers the Medicare program. And you may know this through um, what's called parts A, B, C, and D um, of through the Medicare program. And both Medicaid and Medicare were established in 1965. Uh, the DC Medicaid program provides access to a lot of different um, healthcare services. Um, this includes going to the doctor and having checkups, it could be your physical or a mammogram, um, after hours care, if you need to go to a hospital, we cover those services, uh, dental services, um, emergency care, health care for women who are pregnant, lab and x-rays, prescription drugs, home health care and vision, and even transportation to, um, to your medical appointments. Um, also, in addition to those kind of what I, you know, kind of typical visits that you or services you might get through your health insurance, DC Medicaid also provides a lot of what, what we call long-term services and supports, benefits, and programs. So mostly, a lot of these programs are really to give um, folks the supports they need to stay in your home or somewhere in your community, um, ideally the place that you choose to be in. Um, these are services you don't usually see um, covered through Medicare. They come through Medicaid and the program here in the district. Um, so you may have heard of the Elderly and Persons with Disabilities Waiver Program or EPD waiver. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about those services in a moment. We um, pay for nursing facility services, whether it's a short-term stay, like you had a fall and you need to go in for some extra um, uh, care for a limited amount of time, like a few days or a few weeks, or if, if it's a, you need round the clock care, need to be in a nursing facility, or facility for a long period of time. We also provide personal care aid services. So this is when someone comes into your home, a PCA, an aid, um, and may help you with bathing or dressing or some meal prep. Uh, we have the adult day health program. Um, and this is a program where you can get some services similar to the, the aid services. You just are in a community along with the opportunity to interact with um, other members of your community and receive other supports um, through the adult day health program. And then we have the dual choice program that I'll talk a little bit more about in a moment. And then um, a future program that'll launch uh, that will start next year called PACE. Um, to be eligible for the Medicaid programs, um, Generally, we have financial eligibility requirements. So you have to have a certain income or less. It's usually um, for just basic Medicaid, you need to be about $25,000 of income per year for a single person. Um, and then when you talk about these long-term services and support, so the EPD waiver or P, uh, aid services, um, sometimes to get those um, services, you also have to meet um, care requirements, what we call level of care. So if you've ever had someone from a company called Liberty come out to your home, ask you a bunch of questions about an hour or two, um, they are there on behalf of the Department of Healthcare Finance to find out what kind of supports um, you may need and do you have that level of need um, for the, to meet the eligibility requirements for the EPD waiver services. Um, if you're familiar with EPD waiver, we, through that service, you get case management, again, personal care aid services. And again, that's for kind of that, you know, someone coming in your home and helping you with what we call activities of daily living, so bathing, dressing, um, mobility, getting around safely. We have the Services My Way program, which is similar to having an aid come in your home, except that um, you as the 
um, you pick out who you want that person to be. You don't have to go through a home health agency. So, you know, if you're in the Services My Way program, you get to hire, manage, and, and fire staff if needed, um, providing services like personal care aid services. You get a budget through the Department of Health Care Finance, and that helps you. Um, you maybe you already have someone who's working with you informally, and you'd like to make that um, a little bit more formal. The adult day health programs that I mentioned before, again, just gives you an opportunity to go somewhere in the community community and get some care versus going into um, a different setting like a doctor's office. Um, and then uh, we also pay for our environmental accessibility adaption. So if you need some changes to your home to be safe, um, that's something that um, Medicaid can pay for sometimes. And then finally, we also pay for assisted living um, services. So you may see um, in the past year or two, we've had a couple more assisted living providers um, come on board. There's a, a new provider, um, I think about to open over at Kenilworth as well. So you may be hearing more about assisted living um, as well. Our newest program, and this is one that covers both Medicaid and Medicare, is called Dual Choice. Um, if you are in Medicare and you've been receiving your care through um, something called Medicare Advantage and you are also eligible for the Medicaid program, either for all Medicaid benefits or for us just to pay for some of your Medicare um, co-pays, you may have the option to be in dual choice. And what dual choice is, um, if you're in Medicare and Medicaid now, you have, if you don't have just one person or one entity, you can call with your questions about your care. Um, our goal and hope with dual choice is to give you that one place of contact. Um, so now what we have, if you are in both programs, Medicaid and Medicare, and you're eligible for dual choice, your United Health Plan is your um, health plan and they are responsible for your Medicaid and your Medicare services. So when there's a question, you know you can call United Healthcare. If you have a, um, a problem getting a doctor's visit, you can call United Healthcare. You don't have to figure out who to call when. So we're really trying to streamline and make it easier for folks um, to um, access the care that they need. And then the next program that we're really excited about that will be coming like, um, will be starting uh, beginning of next year, 2023, is a program called PACE. Um, and it's another program um, for people who have both Medicaid and Medicare coverage. Uh, beneficiaries um, or folks to be eligible for the program have to be 55 and older. And it, we do have one of those level of care requirements. Um, as well as you must live in Ward 7 and 8 to be eligible. Our first pay site will be at Skyland Town Center. So if you've driven by or been by recently, um, hopefully you will see um, the work going for the pay site there. And, and PACE is just an opportunity. It's one place to go to to get most of the care that you need. They'll bring in um, a physical therapist if you need it. If you need to see a doctor or a dentist, they, they come to that place at Skyland versus you having to go to different um, doctor's offices across the city. If you want to learn more about these services, um, the Department of Healthcare Finance partners with the Department of Aging and Community Living and, and providing information on all these services and how to find out if you're eligible and how to enroll in the services. So uh, the Department of Aging and Community Living is a great resource. Um, their phone number is 202-724-5626. Um, but at any time, if you ever have questions about your Medicaid or if you're on dual choice, you can also reach out to me, Melissa. My number is 202-834-6318, and that is my cell phone number if you need to reach me with any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it is my understanding that we have uh, some questions, and they are in the queue. Um, so if... I think it's three. If one of you all want to unmute yourself to ask your question, go right ahead and continue on with the Teletown Hall. And start by saying your name. Can you all hear me? Okay, I can see you nodding. She can hear me. Uh, Wanda, can you check and see uh, where we are? Or you can, or you can read the questions, Juan, if you already have them. All 
Okay, I'm hearing nothing at the moment. Thank you, Kevin. Um, you have the switchboard trying to let people in. And Councilman, we can't see the questions. So you said you can't. We we can now. At least I I don't think I can see them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think they're taking them on the switchboard, trying to elevate them up to this, so the people that are on Facebook can hear the questions and comments and dialogue as well from those who are calling in. Okay, so I have the question. All right. The question is, um, it looked like it's from Deborah Green. She said, my first question was regarding the repaving that occurred in front of my house at the 1700 block of Erie Street Southeast. The repaving is preventing me from parking in front of my house, and I would like to be able to park in front of my house. What is the possibility of speed bumps for Erie Street in the 17 to 1800 blocks? Okay, that's a DDOT question. Um, and so we'll elevate that to the DDOT and the mayor's office, um, Ms. Green, and I'll see your address and we'll come back to you. Uh, Wendy, can you get her information uh, so we can call her after this to get specifics? Elevate that up to DDOT. Also, uh, Mr. Curtis. Uh, has a question. Um, when would a grocery store be put on Goho Road? When would a police station go Goho Road? So there's already a grocery store on Goho Road. It's inside the Anacostia Art Center uh, on the first floor. They're fairly new. They've been there a couple of months. They got they started there during the pandemic. Uh, it's in the um, I want to say 1400 block of, of Good Hope Road there. Um, also, up, up the hill, there's going to be another grand opening, which takes place tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, and I'm not sure what time that is, but that's tomorrow, which is a new grocery store opening, uh, which is Lytle, and that's in Skyline. And it's up at the top of the hill of Good Hope Road going into Nella Road and Alabama Avenue. Um, see the other part of that question real quick because I don't want to forget anybody's question. Um, the second part of that question was about speed bumps. That's also a DDOT issue. I don't believe we have DDOT on the call tonight, but we will escalate that to DDOT and get a formal response back. And please note, we've been in a, a series of conversations with DI around a number of intersections, streets, roadways, alleyways, uh, trees, uh, and working very closely to get some results. It's been uh, back and forth uh, for a couple of years. We've had, what, four directors, three including one interim director in the last five years or so. It's been a challenge, but nonetheless, we uh, followed up with them and also have a meeting coming up with of uh, the mayor's team about our roadways and we've had, had the most vehicular uh, deaths out of any ward in Washington, D.C. So we're very conscious of that and making sure we're in the right direction. That's uh, makes sense for the residents, too, because um, we know there are also uh, excessive ticketing and booting going on in the district as well. Um, where are we? All right, that's the two questions I have. Um... Are there any other questions? Question. Oh, that question, sorry, was from Marilyn Lewis. Um, there said to be a question from Attic. All right, let me see. Atticus Morton. Okay. My name is, okay. Oh, there's a comment from Deborah Green. Oh, Deborah Green left the comment. I'm sorry. Some of these questions and comments are coming in through Facebook. She said, I am a former participant of CSEP 
and I would like to encourage all seniors to take advantage of this program. It works. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Green. We appreciate that. I see Ms. McField is waving, excited about that. All right. Are we, are we missing anyone? I see War 7 said we in the house. Thank you, Ms. Rucker. War 7 in the house. We welcome you. Yeah, you guys are cousins, so come on in. Hello, Ms. Green. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so moving right along until we... What's, what's Ms. Morton's question? I don't see Ms. Morton's question. I only see two questions. We're going to move along and come back to Ms. Morton's question. Okay, I'm sorry. I see Ms. Morton's question right here. I'm a senior who is interested in purchasing one bedroom condo. Are there any programs to assist me? DACD states that there is affordable housing. However, I'm looking for a for safer, safe housing that is affordable and clean. Please provide me the resources that can assist me. Um, DHCD, I guess uh, we we'll jump to that. So uh, there's a couple of different programs that can be helpful. Uh, again, uh, some of those community-based organizations may be the place to start, uh, but you can also call our main number or stop by our housing resource center. The first program, as I said, is the housing home purchase assistance program. They can provide up to uh, $202,000 as a uh, second mortgage on a home, which will really reduce uh, the burden uh, of purchasing a home. That program uh, should be of uh, assistance to you, though it is an eligibility and you have to you know, sort of work with the program. Uh, there is also a program called inclusionary zoning. Uh, that program is um, produces affordable homes, largely in um, properties over 10 units that are new construction. So wherever you see new construction happening, there are inclusionary zoning units. Now, some of those units are condos and in those buildings with 10 or more units, some of them are inclusionary zoning uh, units that are made more affordable. They are, however, again, where you're seeing building happening. So Navy Yard, uh, and in, in places downtown, um, but also along uh, uh, Martin Luther King, and Good Hope Road, and, and places like that, if, if, as, if, as there are ownership opportunities produced. So uh, those would definitely be um, things to look for. There are also affordable home ownership units being produced as part of our development and finance team. Uh, and our, uh, but again, both the IZ units and the development finance units in recent years, because of you know, the way the, the the mark is working. There's fewer for home for sale, excuse me, units. Uh, but both of those are are, um, are potential opportunities. And then any unit in the city, in the one bedroom condo would certainly fit, uh, would be something you could probably access if you're eligible for the HPAP program. So home purchase assistance program. So I do encourage you to get in touch with our office. Um, you know, again, you may, similar to what I said in terms of single family rehab, you may need to do some work to get eligible or, or, or there's maybe some things that are, are better for you, uh, but chances are those programs will uh, give you an opportunity. Thank you. And please note that those inclusionary zoning units are through a lottery process. Is that, is that correct? Yes. So that program, the way that works, got some positives and some negatives, uh, but the way that works is you take a course and you put on a list for two years and then people are selected from the list at random. So it's not like, for example, the housing authority list where you may be on the list and you're picked in the order that you uh, entered the list based maybe on a few other factors. Here it really is the case that you could apply one, you'll get on the list one day and be selected the next day. Of course, you can be on the list for the full two years before having to reapply and not be selected. And that's, and that's the, the nature of it, but it is a lottery. Um, and so it's, you know, again, it, it's something to look at uh, because if you're interested in some of those newer, newer units and, and newer properties, um, many of them have elevators, you know, for this, for this crowd, um, you know, it would be a, a good option. Thank you. We're going to take one more question before we continue with the list of panelists. Uh, we have a, 
a question from one of my dear friends, Mother Love. Thank you for joining us, Mother Love. Uh, Mother Love states, I heard the mayor has an office for individuals who have mental health issues. However, this office only helps people up to 65. I'm aware of individuals who are waiting for up to three months for services. Wow. What resources are available specifically specifically for seniors who are in need of mental health services? We got for that, Ms. Bird. I can try my best. Um, uh, if you're if you're on DC Medicaid, you should have access to mental health services um, through the Department of Behavioral Health, uh, which is also available in the district. Um, there are many services available. I don't know the specific office or program you're referring to in terms of under 65, um, but I am happy to connect with Dr. Bazaran at the Department of Behavioral Health about services. Um, what mental health services are available for folks over 65 and I can come back around through the council member's office with that information or if you want to reach out to me directly I can do that as well. Do you have a number or email you want to leave so she can know because I think she's coming in through Facebook. Sure. Um, you can call me at 202-834-6318 and that's my cell phone. My email address is Melissa, one uh, L one S uh, dot bird B as in boy Y R D as in dog at DC dot gov. Got it. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, now we're going to move to um, Patricia Gracelyn. Graciani. Thank you, council member, so much for the invitation. I'm with the Office of the Chief Financial Officer, and I am not a real property tax expert, but I brought two along tonight. All right. Bob McEwen is uh, one of my colleagues from the Office of General Counsel, and Steve Scaron is the Homestead Unit Manager. Welcome. Thank you. So you can elaborate on what it is you all do and how our seasoned citizens can access the resources to the government. Um, I know. Uh, there are a number of concerns of residents that property value and taxes have increased. Um, and there are some things that's put in place to help seniors specifically. If you can start off by speaking to some of that, that'd be helpful. You're muted. Uh, uh -huh. Mr. Yeah, um, yeah. Sure. Yeah, I can, uh, sorry about that. Um, I can speak to, um, the, we have the, um, Obviously, we have the homestead deduction, um, which is administered by Mr. Scowron, who's here as the homestead unit manager. Um, he also administers the um, the senior citizen tax relief program. Um, so the the homestead deduction um, will re you have to number one. It's important that everybody knows that you have to apply for these programs before you can receive the benefits. So if you do not apply, you will not receive the benefit and you will not receive the benefit retroactively. So when you, um, when you apply, um, you receive it, you receive the benefit beginning with the first day of the half tax year in which you applied. So if you were to apply today, since we're in September, it would be effective as of April 1st of 2022 going forward, um, one time application. So, um, you know, but if you apply in October, it's only going to be effective beginning October 1 of 2022 going forward. So it's important that one applies as soon as possible when, uh, when you purchase a home or if you're in a home right now and you're not, and you don't have, but, um, please apply immediately so you can get this, uh, tax relief going, um, prospectively. Um, you can find out whether you're um, receiving the homestead and or the senior citizen tax relief. It's going to be, it's always uh, indicated on your tax bills. Um, so please look at your tax bills to see that you are receiving those benefits. Um, you can also go online on our website um, and, um, you know, at the, the OTR website and, and put in the square and lot of the property or the street address, um, pull it up and it will indicate there whether you're receiving these benefits um, or you can always call 202-727-4829 uh, 
which is our customer service number. Um, and they will gladly assist you with determining whether or not you have these benefits and, and how you can go about applying for them. I think uh, Mr. Scourron maybe will be able to um, talk, talk to talk about how uh, one applies for those benefits since this is a fairly new uh, online process. Um, but we do have an exception for seniors. If they ask for it, they can um, still submit it by paper. Um, but again, uh, we, it is online generally, although there is a, an exception for seniors to be able to use paper, um, but they have to ask uh, in order to, to get that, um, you know, that ability. But um, so again, you know, so the senior citizen uh, benefit is great because what it does is it reduces your, your real property taxes by 50%. So first off, you take the, um, the, real, the homestead deduction the tax savings with the homestead deduction is about 680 or so dollars annually. It, um, it's on a COLA, so it, it escalates, the benefit escalates based on inflation. Um, given this past year's inflation, we may have a, a fairly healthy jump in the amount of the homestead deduction um, to benefit the um, home uh, DC domiciliaries this year. But um, but that, that the new homestead, um, uh, amount of the deduction will be coming out in late December in time for the first half billing next year. Um, the senior citizen um, uh, tax relief is is subject to a um, a um, household income threshold. Um, that household income threshold is I had it up here um, initially and then I had my I had an involuntary reboot on my computer, so I apologize for that. But let me, let so, me try to. Yeah, just go ahead, Steve. Uh, it's uh, one hundred thirty-nine thousand nine hundred dollars. Okay, right. So, yeah, so one one hundred thirty-nine thousand nine hundred dollars. That's the household threshold. So that yeah, so the income of the household. That's everybody that lives in the household, except somebody there that's under a lease. Um, but everybody there in the household, their income is counted, um, and, it, and that total must be less than 139,900, which is a significant amount. So for most um, most people on Social Security or um, just living by themselves, they're they're not going to breach this this threshold. So they can definitely get that senior citizen tax relief. And again, it um, it reduces your tax in in half. And that's and that's after the homestead deduction. So your effective tax rate becomes um, probably more like forty to thirty-five percent of the value of the property. Um, so that's an important benefit. It's probably the most favorable uh, in the union for uh, seniors. The other thing to note is that with the passage of the um, this the new uh, budget support act, the senior citizens are now going to be eligible for a tax cap. And that means their taxable assessment on their real property cannot um, go up by more than 2% a year. Um, so that, that is very um, strong for neighborhood stability, preserving um, seniors, keeping seniors in our neighborhood so they're not priced out by taxes. Um, the tax cap you will see is going to be a huge benefit, um, especially right now it's at, it was, it's at 5%, but um, beginning next year, um, which actually begins, we're on a federal fiscal year, so it begins October 1st. It's just a few days away. Um, the tax cap will now be reduced to 2%. So again, your, um, your taxable assessment on your property cannot go up by more than 2% a year. But in order to get that, you have to apply for the senior, uh, for the homestead deduction and for the senior citizen tax relief. You got You have to get, you have to apply to get the benefits. So then please remember that. We also have um, a um, senior citizen um, tax uh, deferral. So again, the deferral program, it is not, um, there's a little confusion when the deferral program first started that it was an exemption or something like that. It is not an exemption, it is a deferral. So seniors that have household incomes of less than $50,000 may apply for a deferral of all taxes owed on the property. Um, and um, 
you know, if they if they're less than six, 75 years of age, the deferral will accrue interest, um, the deferred amount at 6% per year. Um, so it's not free. Um, but if they're uh, 75 years of age or older, um, it will, and they've li been living in the property or um, for basically the last 25 years, they can defer that at 0% interest. So it's a free deferral but again, it's kind of like a reverse mortgage. And so a lot of seniors are reticent to use this because what it will do is it will take away from the equity of the property um, and, um, and your it, heirs will have to pay that ultimately. Let me cut in real quick, uh, Bob, real quick. Um, and I want to thank, uh, she's not here, but Councilman Manita Bonds, uh, who's been working extremely hard to help our seasoned citizens stay in their homes. And I think that uh, as I listen from seniors, they're appreciative of what we're doing uh, on the council and the mayor's office, but we have to do a little bit more because the prices of these houses are soaring through the roof. Um, we just had a property go for, what, $750,000 for Mississippi Avenue. And if that was a senior at 2%, it'd still be $14,000 a year that, you know, um, that could be taxable. Um, and so we want to look even deeper to figure out how we can keep our seniors. Um, because where I come from, uh, our seniors is, has been for a long time the backbone of the family. So once you lose that house or that property, um, it, it, it breaks down the, the social fabric and the strength of the family. And that has happened over the last couple of decades uh, in Washington, D.C. as we experience gentrification. Um, property values increasing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I know we have a few more questions coming in, um, which I want to get to as well. I um, want to be respectful of everyone's time as well. So I jumped down to uh, Stephen or Sh oh, Sharon. Oh, he, you already spoke. Yeah. Okay, so I'll go back to the questions. I apologize. Actually, yes. you know, um Councilman White, uh, I could speak a little bit more, elaborate a little bit on what Bob spoke about related to the um, the homestead unit, if you don't mind, or unless you want to. Yeah, because Bob was extensive, so I want to jump to the questions. Okay. Very I'm good. Um, see, I, I want to have it interactive with the audience. Um, so this is from. Uh, Deb C. This is maybe Ms. Green again. Uh, this is for D8CD. I'm aware that a client has the application in for roofing repairs for over five years. Who can she reach out to directly? Uh, so, again, they, uh, the individual should have a uh, project manager, uh, and that is the first person they should speak to have to reach out to. If they have any difficulty with that person, uh, we can, uh, they can call um, uh, our office and uh, they can speak to me uh, or they can call uh, the uh, manager, Jeffrey Reese of the program. Uh, that said, uh, the program did experience a, a significant slowdown uh, during COVID and through some transitions in the program that were going on. Uh, we have uh, since picked up the pace uh, and we have um, increased uh, the, um, the, the extent to which we're doing uh, projects. And so it is very likely that that, that individual will be uh, contacted soon. In particular, we've brought on a couple of larger roofing companies that are able to do um, a significant amount of work at one time. Uh, so again, don't, don't lose hope. Please be in touch. Uh, we are uh, trying to catch up from, from the ground we lost. Thank you. Um, and so you can reach directly out to the office and ask for you. Um, and I see there's another question that says the quality, oh, what with the, with the quality? Okay, I'm trying to read it in a way that it makes sense. Would the quality of mental health services in D.C. be upgraded? I know ones who have been injured at CPAP, no accountability at, at all. Uh, I'm, I can speak 
I can't speak directly to the issue. Um, I can certainly again connect to Dr. Bazron. I do know we are working closely with the Department of Behavioral Health in terms of what we can do for Medicaid Behavioral Health Services. Uh, we have a lot of work underway. We've expanded services and, um, and we do work from our end and looking at provider quality. If there's um, to CPEP specifically, I would, um, I'm very happy to, to loop in Dr. Bazor and I really can't speak to that directly. I'm sorry. And thank you. I think that's a, a sentiment that other people may feel as well. Um, so we'll be excited to hop on and, and speak to Wayne Turner's as well. Um, the next thing is why is that, is that, D, that all DC government agencies uh, have no follow-up on anything? No one has answered the phone, but yet they are open. Um, if you can give us a specific agency, our role on the, on the council is to, to be the legislative branch, but also to have oversight over these government agencies. We primarily work with the directors, also the deputy mayors to oversee those agencies to ensure accountability. And so if we can know which agency you're referring to, because right now it says all, uh, we can be more specific to kind of follow up. And please note we'll be doing this again um, as well. Um, so we'll be able to give more feedback and up and have more government agencies like DDOT. We've had a few of DDOT. Actually, there's one of few that we don't have DDOT on our Zoom or Teletown halls. So that's unfortunate because we have a lot of DDOT questions. Uh, Linda Lynch, who lives at the 1800 block of 22nd Street Southeast, has a question about the demolition of the two single family homes in the 1600 block of 22nd Street to build condos. Who would be served by this new development? How would this be zoned? Because it's a community of seniors and they are concerned about the increase in traffic. She also wanted to thank the council member for this, this venue that engaged seniors. Thank you. Um, so DT just went through a new comprehensive plan um, that changed some of the zoning laws and requirements. Um, and the DCRA does not approve any development to be done without permits. Um, and so this is taking place there. Uh, we, we are open to a community conversation about traffic there. We just visited. I know Wendy and I was just at the senior home on Savannah Place last month. Um, and we, we did not hear this. We did not hear this issue. But if this is a concern, we want to bring this up as well to make sure that uh, residents are conscious of the traffic, people double parking, and issues related to uh, this condo building being built in the uh in this residential community uh in this new development um so we will follow up with that um dr Palantir, did you want to add to that i see you about to say something uh, no I, I it sounds like you're very familiar with it so i know i uh just assuming it was since it was a somewhat related to housing i was going to be ready to answer if if i needed to but yeah, it sounds like a demolition of two family homes and they're doing condos, and I've seen that happening in a lot of other wars. You haven't seen it as much in Ward 8, but that is a concern of residents that I've heard in advisory neighborhood commission meetings. Um, and so we are following up, but it's, it's kind of late in the process, being as though there was a sense of dialogue about the DC, the comprehensive plan for DC and zoning, um, which opens up the floodgate for MAP amendments and text amendments to build non-traditional housing on a block that's out of uniformity. Um, any other questions? Looking for my team. Okay, Ms. Lynch, okay, here we go. Some questions right here. Um, my name is Christine Jimerson, and I would like to sign up for it's like CSEP. Is there any waiting period? Is there a waiting period to sign up? Well, with CSEP, we are a small program, but the first step for individuals that are interested in the program is to visit one of our American job centers. Um, we have four American job centers. Um, my office is based on 4058 Minnesota Avenue. 
but you would go there and tell them that you are interested in getting back to work and a workforce development specialist will assess and work with you to identify um, any supports that we'd be able to provide to you, programming that would be a benefit to you. And if CSEP is a good match, they would most certainly refer you to our program. And then I would call you for an intake. And, you know, there's, when individuals are asked about a waiting period, it differs. Um, based on what their job interest is, based on the availability of the host site. So right now there is no um, waiting list, but in the future, two weeks from now, when the slots are filled, there may be a, a wait. So it just depends on um, how individuals transition from the program. But I encourage everyone that is interested to come to the American Job Center because it's our, it's our effort to make sure that we serve everyone that is on our list within you know, uh, a, a, a good amount of time, which I would say within the first six, three to six months is the longest that individuals wait on our waiting list. Thank you so much. Um, I do have a question. Um, let me look at this list. Thank you guys for your questions. We appreciate it. Reverend Wanda Thompson, when seniors with these tax benefits pass and they have no will, What's your family members living in the home do so they don't wind up in a huge with huge tax bills when the discounts are removed and fund and full tax apply retroactively because some aren't aware that there have been discounts. That's, that's a good question. I just had to deal with one of those, uh, I guess, three months ago. Bob, can yeah. you address this? Chief Financial Officer, yes. Um, with the, more than one person. Do you want to take that one, Stephen? Um, so it, it's a good question, and it's one that that uh, we encounter quite often. Um, you know, we're we're certainly uh, open to any suggestions that you have uh, to proactively address these type issues. Um, as far as more specifically, when the house, when, when someone passes away, the property uh, loses its benefits uh, effective if that person was the sole owner of the property, deeded owner of the property. Uh, the property loses the benefit when that person passes away. Um, uh, and unless we're notified that that person passes away, um, and it's possible that individuals that are living in the property go through probate court, probate proceedings take quite a while. Uh, as far as the Office of Tax and Revenue goes in my unit, uh, we are certainly sympathetic to these type of situations uh, because people don't know. Um, so generally we, we will work with the, uh, with the tax assessment once someone has been appointed uh, from probate court personal representative and generally speaking, we will look to um, uh, uh, waive the, the penalty and interest uh, assessment uh, on the property uh, so that on, the only thing that uh, has to be paid is the taxes. Uh, from OTR's perspective, we don't have the ability to waive tax. So uh, if, the, if the property is taxed uh, because the benefit is being removed, uh, we normally will work with these individuals just to, to make sure their their taxes are current uh, and then uh, waive a penalty and interest under these type of circumstances. If I could just add, um, it's, it's very important um, that uh, the estate of the deceased be probated so that title can be transferred to one of the heirs and then that heir can then apply for the benefits. Until that heir has record title, um, they can't apply for the benefits. Um, so, again, it's very important when when a person um, when a when a uh, senior uh, passes away that the heirs immediately begin a probate proceeding in superior court to have title transferred to the heirs, uh, have the property disposed of, so they they can start to apply for the benefit. Let me ask. Um, sorry. Do you have to be a senior to get those benefits? 
Yes, as far as not the homestead deduction, when, to get the homestead deduction, which also has a tax cap, it, it's a 10% tax cap. Your taxes can't exceed 10% per year. But just with the homestead deduction, um, one just needs to be a DC domiciliary, and that property has to be their principal place of residence. And they also need to apply. Um, but to, to get the senior benefit, one of the owners would have to be 65 years of age or older. Isn't there also a benefit to people with disabilities similar to the senior benefit? Yeah, exactly. It's the same. Thank you. They, they would apply, right. They would apply um, for the disabled benefit, um, which is on the same form as the senior and homestead um, benefits as well. Council member, um, I will stress, and I want to stress for folks on the phone, you know, reach out to OTR, you know, learn, you know, do what you can now. Um, you know, this is the, the current process. Uh, you, council member, with the, uh, and the mayor uh, put in last year's budget, or this just coming year's budget, last year you put it in, a heirs properties program, uh, and we are going to be working to stand that up as soon as possible. So that program is coming, um, but in the meantime, please reach out to folks at OTR, please reach out to other legal services organizations. They will help uh, if they can, but please don't uh, duck, you know, duck your head because, as as just described, the the problems only mount as if if you don't start start that probate process and start thinking about how the tax should be paid. Um, because, you know, again, the more you do do that, the more uh, the folks here on the phone are going to be able to to help you as well. Yes, you. Um, and. Ms. Candace Gay, if you can leave your email, that'll be helpful to, for us to follow back up with you. If you can leave your email, I'm going to jump to uh, June Bang. Councilman, I want to thank you for your leadership. Uh, this is June Bang from Iona. We have a part-time employment program called In-Home Peer Support, where we provide employment for older adults. It's low-intensity work where older adults are hired to provide in-home checks uh, check-ins and light work like grocery shopping and basic admin work and help isolated older adults find resources in the city for information contact uh, Ms. Bain I don't want to assume this is a sheet I'm sorry at 202-240-8631 again those interested in this is a powerful program 202-240-8631 we will put in the chat as well. Thank you for expanding the Congress Heights Senior Wellness Center from Ms. Uh, Vanessa Farmer. Yes, absolutely. We're looking to do another Senior Wellness Center in Lower Anacostia in the back of Kramer Middle School. We're working on that. That money is already in the budget. Is waiting for DGS. Um, okay. Ms. Brenda Turry asks, I'm looking for senior housing, but we get this a lot. Is there a specific list for senior housing that is affordable and decent housing for seniors? Where can seniors go to get a list of housing? Um, I, I do believe that uh, the Department of Aging Community Living does maintain that list. I have provided sort of um, information from our uh, data on where senior, senior housing is available or at least where properties are currently and, and, and can be a, a potential source. Um, so that's where I would start. Um, again, where, housing. Joining, you say provided, where, where should they go, call or email or? I believe that the Department of Aging Community Living does maintain um, yes, some, some that information. If not, you can certainly call the Department of Housing Community Development. But again, well, the problem there is that we help build the housing, we don't operate it. So we don't know where current vacancies are or, and we don't know the full range of the other agencies that provide uh, housing uh, for, for seniors. But, um, but again, if, 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 if um, but we do have some of that information, so we can, we do provide it. I have provided it to DACL in the past. And so I think they do provide, keep a list of, of where there's availability. Um, the housing authority also has that, um, that, that sort of information. I mean, again, the difficulty of course, is everyone knows that it is, uh, uh, difficult to get affordable housing. And so you do have to call around and, and, and get on, um, make sure you're on the programs lists and, and, and things like that. But 
but I do believe that the Department of Aging and Community Living can assist us with that. And as, I mean, as can our community-based organizations who do um, do uh, housing counseling. And thank you, Ms. Bird. The, the, the number um, is 202-724-5626. Again, it's 202-724-5626. Thank you so much for that, um, Ms. Bird. Um, all right, we got, we got 10 more minutes. I need help filing my taxes. I was in the hospital for a number of months. I had an amputation and could not get it around. Mm -hmm. I also need repairs to my home. My husband, myself, are both handicapped and low income, along with being seniors. Um, Ms. Didi, if you can provide your information, we'll follow up tomorrow and connect you with the right. I know they had a a special program for seniors filing taxes in the ward for the last couple of years. Um, so we are connected to those partners. Also, we normally have the Office of Aging here as well to help assist us with that. So we'll follow up. If you can leave your contact information, my staff is here, we'll follow up. Um, what is classified as a senior and what is the age? And I know that means different things to different agencies or organizations of people. This is from Alicia Rucker. I'll answer it for CSEP. So for DOES's CSEP program, we are a 55 and older program. So um, anyone 55 and older, not job ready, district resident that's interested in getting back to work, come please come please visit us at the American Job Center. And for Medicaid, um, it depends on which Medicaid program you're looking at. Um, if it's just straight Medicaid, um, it's more about income, less than the age, uh, less about your age, even though that factors in. Uh, for some of our programs, like um, PACE that's coming on board, it's 55 plus. And then for our EPD waiver, that's the elderly and um, people with a physical disabilities waiver, it's 65 plus. Um, for the elderly side, and if you have a physical disability, it's 19 to 64. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Is those seniors living in uh, condos eligible for uh, the repairs that DACD offers for seniors? Uh, we are looking at that right now. Um, so currently, the single family rehab program does not offer assistance for condominium owners. Um, we do have assistance for, for also rental properties, small and large, and we have assistance for co cooperatives, small and large. Um, condos do fade. We do. There's some 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 issues with condos that we're trying to work out legally. Uh, so it's our intention to uh, figure out how we can provide that assistance, particularly for the shared elements like roofs and uh, sidewalks and and all that stuff. But it does present a little bit of a legal uh, and a policy challenge that we're trying to figure out. We've been talking to other jurisdictions about what they uh, what they do and what they don't do, and so we're hoping to have something. Uh, but right now, single family rehab program does not uh, serve uh, condominium owners. Now, the um, I think the um, safe at home program um, and some of the DOE programs do assist condo owners if if they can. So. That is uh, something to look at. And again, our, our community-based organizations may be able to help you uh, navigate that. Got you. Um, Dr. Pelletieri, can you leave your email and number again, please? Uh, if you can tell it to us audibly, that will help. We can type in a, in a text on Facebook. Yeah, it looks like I can type it for you in Facebook. And, um, I'm not on Facebook, I'm on uh, Zoom. I can pay for you and maybe someone from your staff can and, uh, we also have phones as well, so you can say it audibly, that'd be helpful. Yeah, so it's Danilo, D-A-N-I-L-O, last name, sorry, dot P-E-L-L-E-T-I-E-R-E -L -L -E -E at dc.gov. So if you can see my name at the bottom of my screen, it's that with a dot in between and then at dc.gov. Um, and uh, you can reach me at 202-442-5681. I will uh, provide that uh, as well. Um, wow. 
Got it. I see it in the chat. All right. I will note that I'll be on jury duty tomorrow. So All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't see any more questions, guys. I'm looking through the feeds. Um, I'm missing anyone. Um, okay, I have one. I've been contacting DCRA regarding a vacant and abandoned property in my block in 2422 Alabama Avenue. Okay. The owner has abandoned the property, but the property is a hazard. What well, assistance can be provided to the property so it won't be a hazard? The tree is always about to fall. So uh, I know sometimes we get those properties boarded up, and then DCRA in turn finds the owner for not boarding that property up or properly addressing the issues with the grass and or other uh, outside amenities that affects the property. Uh, 2422 Alabama Avenue. Okay. Um, it's Jones. Okay. Okay. All right. What other rental assistance is available for senior citizens who has exhausted ERAP for rental assistance? The seniors have no social security or other funding who has received partial ERAP, but is still in need of assistance. That's a good one. We get that one every day, a few times a day, not just from seniors, but all over the district. So I uh, so I want to say that the, except for during a brief period during COVID, the Department of Housing and Community Development does not provide for direct uh, rental assistance to individuals. Um, but uh, there are a number of, um, of programs that provide a longer term assistance. Um, and uh, you know, so you, I think DC Housing Authority is probably your first. Uh, place to go if you haven't. I know that that there is, um, you know, a long a waiting list for many of the programs there. But it absolutely talk to the DC Housing Authority. Um, in terms of emergency assistance, right now ERAP is the the program to provide assistance. Um, and so for those who haven't run out of that assistance, and if you're getting behind on your rent, uh, please contact uh, ERAP. Uh, we are still receiving federal funds uh, to help with that program, so it is more expansive than it has been uh, in the past. Um, so please, uh, please apply to, to ERAP. But um, the housing authorities probably, or again, the community-based organizations that provide housing counseling uh, is, is where you need to, um, to, to look uh, to, to see if you can find assistance. But, but ERAP is in many ways the, um, the, the emergency rental assistance that's currently available. Note that the new fiscal cycle starts for the government in a few days. Um, so there, these agencies and organizations will be getting new monies. Um, and also we lean heavily upon the Office of the People's Council because not only do we find that those two have apartment or renting rent is behind, but their utilities are behind as well. And they can be contacted at 202 uh, 727 3071 again that's 202 727 3071 um and also the email is info i n f o at o p c dash d c dot gov office of the people's council 727 all right guys I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. It's been a fruitful conversation. It is my hope that we've been helpful. Our job is also to follow up, um, to be available to serve you as a government that you pay taxes in, grew up in, raised your family here, to work, we work for you. I'm honored to serve you as the council member here in the Great Ward 8, and you matter to us. And so uh, we want to close out this by saying stay, stay safe, uh, be vigilant, be vigilant, uh, and, and, you know, protect yourself at all costs. We are still in a pandemic. We still have a lot going on. Um, and we're also conscious of what Russia is doing. That's a whole other conversation, but we're paying attention. We lean on us. We want to thank all those who joined the panel tonight. I know some of you all worked all day, didn't have to jump on the Zoom at night. Thank you so much for being here for our seasoned citizens and giving them some great information with which you can follow up on. All right, you all have a blessed night. Take care and God bless. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you all. Bye, all right. everybody.